So it is, I think, right about 6.30. So I will go ahead and open us with prayer and then make the same uh, sort of introductory comments as far as participation. Lord God, we come to you from our many different places where we are virtually gathered tonight, and there is so much going on in the world around us, Lord, uh, and so we just come before you, we, we humble ourselves before you, we bow before your throne, Lord, and we rejoice that you are sovereign over all things, that you are the creator and sustainer of the universe, that you are the source of all blessings and the giver of all wisdom, Lord God. We rejoice in that. We rejoice that you invite us to come and kneel before you, Lord, and to make our requests and petitions known to you. And so in this uncertain time, we have many requests on our hearts. Those we care about who are not feeling well, Lord, we pray that you would bring healing to them and strength. Those who are dealing with the physical effects of this disease that is going around. Lord, we pray for healing for them. We pray for, for a, a fast and, and complete recovery, Lord, that you would strengthen their body and the, the systems of their body to fight off this virus as it, as it works its harm. Lord God, we do lift up the entire world situation to you. We pray, Lord, that you in your, in your will would stop this, this virus in your power, for we know you have that capability to stop the spread of this disease. Or to slow it, Lord. And we do ask that, Lord. We pray that would be your will. And Lord, we pray for all those who are having to, to treat and care for those who are already sick. Or who may soon fall sick, Lord. We pray for the strength for them. We pray for protection for them. We pray for sustaining for them. Oh God, this week I think more than perhaps last, many are facing some of the financial impacts of this situation. As people are being laid off, hours cut back, jobs lost, security, uh, or at least the feeling of security lost, Lord God, we know that in truth all security comes in you and not in the things of this world, but that does not lessen the pain that many are feeling. And so, Lord, I pray that you would give comfort, that you would give strength for the days ahead. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to take seriously the injunction to seek your kingdom first and foremost and to not be anxious but just to simply pray before you lord we pray that this time of suffering would be swift that it would end and that there would be a strong recovery lord for all involved who are affected in every way Lord God, we pray for wisdom and guidance for the leaders, both uh, political and, and technical, scientific, medical, at all levels of government. We just ask for your hand of blessing upon them and help them to make wise decisions and just decisions that glorify you. Lord God, we lift up the churches all across the world that are suddenly having to make tough decisions or determine how to to worship you in different ways. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to glorify you in worship and in prayer and in care. Lord, I pray that you would help the church to truly be what you've called us and made us to be. Lord, I pray that you would help us to, to love you with all our heart and soul, mind and strength and to love our neighbors as ourselves in this time, Lord, that we might shine the light of Jesus Christ in this community into the far ends of the earth. Lord God, we lift up this time together, and I pray that it would be a time that helps to, to build spiritual habits, even as we have this sort of slowdown of our general life, that it would be a time in which new spiritual disciplines are built into our lives that will draw us nearer to you, that make us more like your son Jesus, Lord, habits that would last for a lifetime and that would, that would really just impact every aspect of how we walk through our days, not only during this difficult time, but in the many days ahead. And Lord God, we lift these things up in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I see people, more people jumping on to the feed. Welcome, and I apologize for being vertical. There's some quirk in my Facebook app on my phone, so I'm having to be vertical tonight. Uh, just want to share with you that uh, Debbie is here to help with uh, monitoring the feed. And so anywhere along the line, as you have questions, as you have comments, if you have things you want to share, 
uh, you can go ahead and just put those into the feed and even if it streams past faster than I can see, uh, Debbie will be collecting those up and when we take pauses and breaks, she will feed the, the questions uh, to us, uh, to me, uh, to do my best with uh, along the way. <coughs> Just a couple of uh, announcements. Uh, you've already kind of had, uh, you've seen by email, I think, or you, if not, you will soon, just the, the variety of things that are available and going on over the next few days here. Uh, it's uh, Lake Ridge at Home, uh, and of course that is on our website, all the different things you can, you can get to. Uh, in addition to our Bible study here tonight, we will be having the the Zoom Cafe on Friday morning, that's at 10.30, uh, and that's just a very casual time to connect in and see each other's faces, hear each other's voices, uh, talk about the adventures of social distancing and the challenges of it, lift up some prayer requests, and uh, I'll have a devotional, uh, but it's a very casual time. And also you should have an email uh, that on Saturday morning, uh, Niall Radcliffe is uh, making available through Zoom a, a new Bible study. Normally he teaches the men's Bible study on Saturday mornings or leads that. Uh, but he is opening this up to the, anyone in the congregation, uh, male or female. And he is doing a new study from Kyle Eidelman. Uh, well, I just drew the blank on it. Uh, Don't Give Up, uh, which is, I think, a timely study for the situation that we are in. So again, I'm going to, uh, and of course, worship 1030 Sunday morning. Uh, every week, our goal is to, you know, learn a little bit, do a little bit better to help the, the your worship experience be more engaging for you. And in that vein, likewise, if you would like to have a hymnal, because quite honestly, with a 10 person limit, many weeks, we're going to have a lot of hymns uh, because we need slightly fewer people uh, in the room to do that. So if you would like a hymnal to borrow so you can sing along at home, uh, just swing through the parking circle tomorrow morning, Thursday, uh, from 10 to 11, and you can pick up a, a hymnal, check it out, and then just bring it back when we're able to all come back together again. All right, welcome aboard to those who've come on. I'm now just about to get started, but I will once again reiterate what I said, which is from this point, for this study, uh, I think until we, as long as we've got the the COVID situation and we can't gather in person. Um, Debbie is very helpfully uh, here to monitor the feed and collect comments and questions. So you guys can throw out comments and questions all along the way and then she'll collect those up and, and ask me the questions uh, when we get to, to breaking points. So whether that's something you've had on your mind for the past week since the last study or something I talk about tonight. Uh, you're welcome to do that. So as we get ready to, before we dive into the, the new topic tonight, I just want to give the opportunity for a homework check. All right, so hopefully there'll be some groans in the comment feed, uh, maybe some positive things as well. Because last week we talked about worship and we talked about three aspects of worship. We talked about public worship, we talked about private worship, and we talked about family worship. You've now had a, a week. You've had the opportunity for private worship. Uh, you've had the opportunity for at least online public worship, and I know many of you participated in that. Uh, that was exciting. Loved the pictures you posted of you at church. Uh, and for those who, who uh, didn't think you should post a picture of yourselves because of the condition you were in at church, well, that's, that's okay. We knew you were watching. Uh, so you had that chance for, for our online public worship, for private worship, and if you've got family in the house, the chance for family worship uh, this past week. So if you would, if you have any good stories uh, from this past week about your worship experiences, any of them, uh, as you kind of applied maybe some things we talked about last Wednesday, go ahead and share your stories in the comments. Uh, the good stuff, the funny stuff, the, the stuff that maybe didn't go quite as well as you planned. Uh, feel free to share those with the community here in the, in the chat and the conversation. And then... My advice is to uh, just keep worshiping. All right, keep worshiping. Uh, the things that might have felt awkward or stiff this week, if you were not used to doing them, will come to feel more natural with uh, practice. So keep worshiping privately. Keep worshiping as family. Keep worshiping publicly, even if publicly is on the internet uh, over social media. 
Now let me briefly recap the, the whole uh, course and kind of you know, what we're doing here, uh, just in case anybody's new to the, our Wednesday night study, right? We are in an eight-week, actually it's a nine-week, I said eight-week, but there's, spring break got canceled, so I think it'll be a nine-week study um, uh, that is based on Don Whitney's book, Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life. And what we are doing is over these nine weeks, we are focused on developing spiritual habits, personal spiritual habits, habits that are rooted in Scripture and the, the example of Scripture uh, that are done for the purpose of growing in godliness, right? We don't do these habits just to be really disciplined. We don't do these habits uh, to, to pat ourselves on the back or to win a, a gold medal as the, the most, you know, the best disciplined Christian at Lake Ridge Baptist Church. We do these things to grow in godliness, meaning to grow nearer to Christ and to grow more like Christ. And our focal verses throughout this study, uh, so Lauren says, what's the name of the book by Don Whitney? It is called Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life. And I would show you a picture, but it's on my Kindle, so it's, uh, I don't normally I hold the book up when I do these kinds of things, and I, I can't do it because it's on Kindle, so it just doesn't show very well. But if you look on Amazon, it's easy to get on, on uh, Kindle. Um, if it's in stock, you can get it from Amazon reasonably quickly. If it's not in stock, good luck, because Amazon's kind of slowing down on certain things. So our focal verses to this are 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. All right, and that is why we are doing this. Just as we train ourselves in uh, physical training, you know, if we go to the gym or we go running or something like that, and that has certain value as we train ourselves mentally, I would say through school, but that's not really much of an option right now. But in other ways, uh, we can train ourselves in godliness, developing these habits that help us grow nearer to, to Christ and become more like him. And so we have looked in the, the previous weeks, we have looked at meditation on scripture. We have talked about scripture memorization. We have talked about prayer and we've talked about worship. And I'm kind of reordering now the, what we're doing in the weeks to really emphasize or, or move forward some habits that I think are particularly well suited to this moment we are in uh, as a people. Now, every one of these habits is well suited to the moment we are in. And indeed, um, my prayer is that as a, we are in this point where life is kind of maybe not all the way on pause, but it's certainly in slow motion we have the opportunity to develop some habits that will really profoundly change our lives. But, but the one I want to look at tonight that I'm moving, uh, this is actually an additional one. It was not on the original eight week, but since I have an extra week, I can talk about it, is one that I think is very well suited for this moment that we are in because we are in this season where we just have a lot to process. And we really need to lean into God, right? Whether it is just the, the seeming just, you know, craziness of watching the familiar culture we are so used to for after so many years, you know, really just go and almost seize up. Uh, or whether it is the loneliness and isolation, whether it is fear, whether it is physical illness, whether it is uh, financial hardship that may be coming into this season. This is a time where we have a lot that we just need to, to process, we need to, to, to talk about with God, that we need to really lean into God. And so the one we're going to be looking at tonight, I think, is exceedingly helpful with that for those who practice it. And I would encourage you to at least give it a shot, uh, whether it's just for this unusual season or whether it becomes a lifelong habit, as I think would be beneficial for most. Uh, but the topic is journaling. And journaling is something that blends the Bible and daily living. And that's the way it helps us grow in godliness because, because biblical journaling is the place where our understanding and reflection on Scripture meets our processing and reflection on our own lives. Hence why you can see where there's some certain applicability for 
uh, the situation that we are in as a people. And that's, you know, why, if you look, historically, many of the godliest people have been very faithful about keeping journals. And I'm going to talk about it in a minute. It's not required by any measure. There have been plenty of godly people who have not kept journals. But if you look at history, many of the godliest people have kept journals very famously. Augustine, Jonathan Edwards, George Mueller, and many, 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 many more. And while it is not required, I think the case can be made that it is modeled for us in Scripture, not as a commandment, but something that we actually see some of the authors of, of the Bible doing. If you think about the Psalms and the nature of the Psalms, so many of them are crying out or discussing and describing not only the situation that the psalmist, usually David, is in, but his theological reflections, his emotional reflections, and how that, uh, how they intersect. And how in the end he takes his thoughts and his reflections and his concerns and he, and he brings them and, and points them onto faith in the Lord. So you can think of the Psalms in many ways as a kind of journal uh, written by King David and others along the way. Likewise, the short book of Lamentations reads a great deal like Jeremiah's journal. So Jeremiah was the prophet. He has a very, very, very long book by that name, Jeremiah. But immediately after that is a very short book called Lamentations, which reads very much like his inspired reflections on the events of his time, and specifically which event the destruction of Jerusalem, which is a very, very striking event, as you might imagine, uh, particularly when you realize that for the Jewish people, including Jeremiah, their identity was very much rooted in Jerusalem, the, the city of God, the, where the temple of God was. Uh, and so to see it destroyed was kind of earth shattering far more profoundly than what we are currently going through as a, a culture. And so Lamentations reads a lot like his, his journal. Now, journaling, as I said, can be quite helpful, particularly in unsettling times. Uh, it helps you process the many thoughts that run around in your head, right? So one of the challenges is as there are lots of things going on in the world around us and we're getting distressed about them and maybe there's, there's difficult things in our family or our work life or health, uh, those things can get to rattling around so much in our head, we can get so focused on them that it's very hard for us to to really think in a, in a clear path forward, to uh, really reflect on and, and seek God in a way that, that allows us to focus. And I can certainly testify to that in my own experience. Now, I'm not a, by any means a consistent journaler at this point, although I'm thinking that as this goes on, it might be a, a good time to work on becoming a consistent journaler. But there are definitely times that I found it very useful when there's just been an awful lot going on where... Uh, when I write down uh, you know, and journal in the way that we're going to talk about tonight, uh, it is very helpful to me, not only to be able to think about the things I'm journaling, but to, to really let the, the, the rattling around aspect, the chaos that's in my mind, clear up and be replaced by usually a great deal of clarity. And so that is why I would encourage you, if you are not a journaler by nature, some of you are, in which case tonight is kind of uh, not, you know, this is your chance to give your pro tips along the way in this discussion, and I would. If you are already a, 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 a habitual journaler, biblical journaler, go ahead and be sharing your advice in the comments here. Um, but I think for all of us, as we are processing events that are uh, without parallel and at least just about almost all of our lives, this is a good time to do some journaling. So let's talk about what is biblical journaling, and then I'll take a break and answer if any questions or comments have come in, although my feed at least has gone quiet recently. But what is biblical journaling? I want to kind of uh, put that concept out there, because I think it's a little bit different than just a typical journal or diary, um, because there's a little bit of intentionality about what you're doing with it. So it, a biblical journal is more than just a simple list of your activities for the day uh, or uh, the petty grievances of life. Um, so it's not like your stereotypical dear diary kind of thing. Not that you can't address these things. In fact, you should uh, be doing that. 
uh, and, you sh and we want to be able to do that, but it is more than that. I think at a most basic fundamental level, you should think of your journal as the place where you are documenting the works and the ways of God in your life. Right? Perhaps more than anything else, that's, that's what you're putting in there. The way that God is working in your life, the way he has worked in your life. Just the very ways of God as you are reflecting about them and, they're, and applying them into your life. And so there you would be recording things like daily events and relationships, but you're also putting in there scripture insights and prayer requests that you're lifting up and prayer requests that were answered and reflections and the feelings that are going on in your mind. It's also a good place for devotional thoughts and you know even theological ponderings. You know, the good news is your journal is not something you're going to like hand over to the professor, to the pastor, to inspect. So, you know, this is your place where you can kind of ask questions that you're not sure about and, you know, that you want to wrestle with or, or do more uh, research on. Or you wonder if, well, maybe this is this or maybe this is that. Uh, it's also, in the context of spiritual habits, the things we've been talking about these past few weeks and we'll be talking about for the next several your journal is a great place to record your progress in them, right? Are you, it's a great place to record. Are you making progress in reading your Bible every day? Are you making progress in taking time to meditate every day? And journaling and meditation are very tightly related, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, but a great place to, to talk about, you know, as your prayer life. Is it growing or is it kind of stepping backwards? Uh, and it's a place to hold yourself accountable, you know, with regard to some of the things within these spiritual habits. Have you gotten out of certain habits? And it's a good place to remember that. So uh, that's kind of what, at a very basic level, a biblical journal is. And, and I do think overall tonight's lesson is probably going to be a little bit on the shorter side. And that may be true some of our weeks ahead, uh, because some of these are easier to talk about than others. I've got a number of things I want to talk about, which is sort of the benefits of journaling and then some tips on biblical journaling but i want to pause here just to see if i missed anything that went by in the feed that would be um, helpful or if you again if you have any comments suggestions go ahead and post them in here uh, and debbie will 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 speak she's got a microphone so she can pass along whatever you've got that i missed in the in the stream i just said to look back on your journaling is amazing that 2020 hindsight Yes, that, and we will actually talk about that a little bit later on, the power when you look back at your, your journals and you have a little bit of distance, objective distance, um, you know, because we're writing our journal, we're very much in the midst of things, and so there are a lot of feelings, strong feelings, concerns, fears, anxieties, joys, and so forth, and so when you look back a month later, or six months later, or a year later, and, and you look at not only where you were, but then you have this reflection of what happened afterwards, and you have this ability to see how God moved across that period of time. It's exactly like Audra says. It is just um, an extraordinary thing that even helps to build and reinforce your own faith. Any other sort of comments or questions that I missed on the stream? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, he, he again. The good news is you don't turn your uh, your journal into the pastor or the professor. Uh, so the good news is uh, God knows what you meant. Now, if you want to look back on your journal six months or years later, you might want to make sure your spelling is good enough that you know what you meant. So let's talk about some of the, the benefits of biblical journaling, why so many faithful Christians for 2,000 years have done it. Uh, and talk about some of the, the good things about it. So first and foremost, a, a biblical journal is a, a great tool for thinking about and applying the gospel, right? For applying the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to your own life, your own circumstances, those circumstances that surround you. Uh, it is a place to reflect on God's word and, and the riches of his grace to us in Christ. And that does not mean your journal entries need to read like, a theological textbook or like you should be you know you shouldn't journal if your journals don't come off reading like a, a pastor would or something like that no the the journal is really a place where you're recording your thoughts and your reflections uh, on 
your own studies of the Bible and how God's you know, grace and the gospel applies in your own life and in your own, own heart. And so like every other spiritual habit, we're doing it to become more like Jesus. And so that's the idea is that it is that place to say, all right, the way, one of the ways, you know, key ways to become more like Jesus is we are applying the gospel to every aspect of our life. So it might be that we are reflecting on what we have read and how the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ speaks into our marriage. Right? We might be having some, some marital difficulties and we go ahead and we're reflecting there on how, how the fact that God could, could, was willing to, to come forth in the flesh and sacrifice himself, that while you know, we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What does that speak to our willingness to sacrifice ourselves for our spouse? All right? Even if we feel like they have wronged us, because of course we wrong Christ so often and yet he forgives us. And so there's that application there. Or for our kids, right? If we are you know, going nuts because we're, we're locked into our house with children who will never ever go back to school again, at least it feels like it. Uh, and this is only, you know, about day nine or 10 of mommy's captivity. Uh, and, you know, you're, you're having some difficulty there. You know, that's a great opportunity, again, to say, you know what, the, the things that are driving, you know, as you're reflecting on scripture and you're reading and things like that, you might say, you know, the things that, that my kids are driving me crazy with. When I think about it, I realize that I do these things to God, right? I'm constantly, you know, doing this and constantly doing that and making bad choices. And yet he always loves me. He always forgives me. And his love for me is not in any way contingent or transactional based on my behavior. Uh, and how do I apply that to the, the part where, you know, I'm, I'm going nuts as a, you know, working, trying to work from home, mom or dad or both. And, you know, there's all kinds of stresses about that. Uh, while the kids are also working uh, from home. So like I said, like every other spiritual habit, we do it to become more like Jesus. So as you are writing your journal, and we're going to talk about, right, there's no specific format. There's no right or wrong, really. Uh, you know, journal entries could be short. They could be long. They could be more bullet points. They could be more... Uh, essays, they could be electronic, they could be print, they could be notebooks, they could be, you know, Word documents. The important thing is don't just log stuff, right? It's not your checklist of what you did today, uh, each day, or each week, depending on how often you're journaling. There has to be some critical reflection in there, right? Critical reflection on scripture and on yourself. And and that's not to say your, your, log, your journal is the place where you're constantly beating up on yourself, but it is the place where you want to try and be honest about yourself and really look at yourself in light of God's word and in light of the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, Romans 12, 3 says, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned, right? We are biblically called to uh, reflect on ourselves honestly from time to time, to examine ourselves. And the journal is a great way to do that, right? Because naturally we want to just uh, pat ourselves on the back and be like, man, another great day of following Jesus. I have nailed it again. Uh, and maybe you did, but more often because we... Uh, remain yet uh, saved, transformed creatures with residual sin in our heart. Uh, we probably had some, some moments that did not entirely please God, and we need to reflect on that honestly, and that's uh, what we're trying to do there. So a journal is a means by which the Spirit shows us areas of weakness or sin, um, reveals our motives and our mistakes, uh, and then that's where you get back to what Audra said earlier, right? Periodically review those older entries when you're able to look at them more objectively. And maybe you realize either you were too critical of yourself or you realize, hey, look how much of the progress I've made on this. Or you can look at it and say, oh my, I was doing much better six months ago than I am now. So what do I need to change about my routines and practices to get back on track? And one thing I want to be sure I sort of caution you, right? Even though the biblical journal is about life, it is about our thought life, it is about our relationships, it's about the events of our life, it's about the events of the world, right? All with a sort of a lens and a perspective of Scripture and God's Word. 
any journaling has the potential to really kind of turn us inward on ourselves where we're really just focused only on ourselves that's not the goal right our uh, habits that lead us to godliness always need to be pushing us outward towards others towards loving god more richly and to loving our neighbor more fully and so we do want to be careful with our biblical journaling uh in that regard so First, first good reason to be doing journaling is that it is a great tool for thinking about and applying the gospel to our lives. Again, I've seen some things go by, so I'll let um, Debbie catch me up on what was in the stream so you don't have to look at video of me squinting in the computer. Well, we had um, two suggestions. Carly says that she keeps a spiral notebook. In it, she has pages of prayer requests and answer prayers and puts a column down the page with requests on one side and answers on the other so she can track it. Oh, that's, a, that's fantastic. Awesome to see God's faithfulness. And, and you know, uh, again, and that's a great piece of advice. Or, uh, I'll, I'll sort of point out the sort of legend in this category. The, the champion in this category was a man named George Mueller, uh, who intentionally journaled every prayer request so that uh, he would be able to prove to unbelievers that God was real and active. And if I remember right, I think it was something like fifty to 60,000 documented prayers answered um, that you can see in his journals. Lord said also at Box that you use a private prayer journal with your mentor um, where to tap back and forth for concerns um, and it can also track what's been overcome. Oh, very good, yes. Very, that's excellent. Very good. So we talked about the first part of, you know, some good reasons to do journaling, that, that, that reflection, that's honest self-evaluation in the light of Scripture. Another one is that journals are a great help for meditation. If you have not watched the first session of this study on scriptural meditation, I would encourage you to do that, uh, particularly if you don't have a lot else going on in your days. But journaling can be a powerful help with regard to meditation. I mean, journaling itself can be a form of meditation, but you can go the other way, which is you have your time of meditation as you are reflecting on some verse that particularly stood out and spoke to you powerfully, and you're thinking about all the different applications in your life, and you're, you're kind of reviewing the words and the emphases and things like that. And after you've had your time of meditation, um, in reflection and how to apply it to life, you can write that down, right? Make that a key part of your journal is, are, are the, the results of your meditations, the insights you've gained, because what you will find then is that your meditations will stick with you um, far longer, right? Because because we meditate because it helps scripture absorb in, because if we don't meditate on scripture, we read our scripture and then five minutes later, we don't remember what we read. So we meditate on scripture, it helps it soak into our soul a bit more so that we can apply it better and remember it throughout um, the days. But on top of that, if you're writing it down, then that meditation is gonna stick with you even longer. Another good, good thing about journaling, a wonderful thing about journaling, and I certainly encourage people sometimes you know, in counseling situations to do, do this, is that a journal, a biblical journal, is a place to just honestly pour out your thoughts and feelings to the Lord. And this is a behavior that we see modeled in the Psalms, right? And what the, what, what the psalmist does as he is extraordinarily honest with God about the hurts and the fears and the sense of betrayal and the sense of abandonment and the sense of desertion. Uh, you know, the, the Psalms give us the courage to be honest with God. It gives us the example that it's okay. And so if we start journaling about these things, not only does it help us to truly take them to the Lord in prayer, one of the reasons it does that is it helps develop our skill for putting those things into words. Right? For putting our thoughts, our fears, our agonies, our anxieties, our feelings into words that we can lift up to God. And that is, as I say, exactly what we see modeled for us in the Psalms. Another thing about a journal and the act of journaling is as we're processing these these deep feelings within us, they, they, you know, the, the, journal, the act of journaling forces us to slow down. Right Again, other than during this particular pandemic, we in Northern Virginia are so go, 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 go all the time 
that um, we seldom slow down, and so we seldom really think very deeply about things. And so what we ha get is sort of this vague dread, you know, in our gut or this vague sense of feeling, but we never process the feeling. We never put it into words. We never really explore what the source of it is so that we can really turn it over to God in prayer. And so by slowing down, a journal helps us to think and feel much more deeply about not only the things within us, but about the things of God. And Maurice Roberts says that a spiritual diary will tend to deepen and sanctify the emotional life of a child of God. There's great value to us of becoming more deeply emotional over the great issues of our faith. Our age is not deep enough in feelings. And the point that's made next, I think, is really good. Biblical men, right, the people in, in the Bible are depicted as weeping copious tears, as sighing and groaning, as on occasion rejoicing with ecstasy. They were ravished by the very idea of God. They had a passion for Jesus Christ, his person, offices, names, titles, words, and works. And I certainly think that most of us are pretty short in those areas. He, he concludes, it is, our it is our shame to be so cold, unfeeling, and unemotional in spite of all that God has done to us and for us in Christ. The keeping of a diary might help to put us right in this respect also. And I think there is some truth to that because we do tend to not have enough time to reflect and process. We tend to get a little bit uh, maybe shallow in our processing. And, and so we are so emotionally cold, right? To Compared to the, the great biblical figures that when they think of God, they're blown away by God. When they think of Christ, they are just not only intellectually overwhelmed by Christ, but they are emotionally overwhelmed by Christ. Uh, whereas we today sometimes are a bit shallow and casual about uh, the very extraordinary things that are revealed to us and described in God's Word. <coughs> a journal is also a place to remember God's works. Psalm 77, verses 11 and 12 says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. This is just one of many places in Scripture that is telling us to, to remember what God has done, the way he has acted throughout history and in our own lives. And so a journal, by taking the time to write it down and creating a... a uh, a written record that we can look back on, as Audra talked about at the beginning, is something that helps us maintain a heart of gratitude towards the Lord, right? It, it's that journal to record prayers that have been answered and blessings that have been stowed, like Carly was talking about. And to just see, as we look back, that, that movement of God in our own lives so that we remember it, right? And, and what, why do we want to remember God's works? Because it helps us remember that he is always faithful. So when we are able to, as so many in Scripture do, look back and say, God has always been faithful. This is how he, he worked powerfully in my life. We can have the confidence that he will continue to work powerfully going forward. That he will always be faithful. Charles Spurgeon said, I have sometimes said when I have become the prey of doubting thoughts... Well, now I dare not doubt whether there be a God. For I can look back in my diary and say, On such a day, in the depths of trouble, I bent my knee to God. And wherever I had risen from my knees, the answer was given me. All right, and so because we have that diary, that record, that journal, that log of God's faithfulness in the past, when we are having our, our times of doubts, our struggles, we can look back and say, God has always been faithful. I know he always will be faithful. And this is indeed the great example we see throughout Scripture. A journal is a helpful reminder as well of your goals and priorities and your progress on your spiritual habits. So I had mentioned that earlier, that as you are trying to build these disciplines in your life of, uh, of Scripture reading, Scripture meditation, Scripture memorization, prayer, private worship, family worship, public worship, and the other habits we'll talk about in weeks to come related to silence and solitude, fasting, giving, serving, sharing, and so forth. Uh, it is that opportunity where you can keep track of your goals and your progress, your successes, and your, your, your failures. 
So I don't think I've seen any specific comments or questions pop by on the feed since we last paused, but I'll stop. Oh, no, I'm getting the, the way from Debbie, so we'll just keep moving. So here's an opportunity for kind of more interaction. We've had some helpful advice and tips in this area. But let me just say a few words in this sort of final portion on ways of journaling and tips for journaling. So again, if you've got suggestions, things that have worked for you, whether it's past or present, go ahead and uh, throw that out there. But with regard to the ways of journaling, as I already said, there is no specific right or wrong way. There is no specific content or format or length or frequency beyond the kind of guidelines we've already talked about of, of making sure that you are including biblical reflection and, and, and a re your reflection and application of God's word in your life. Your journal could be handwritten or it could be electronic. I, you know, I can assure you that when I do it, it's electronic because... After about 24 hours, only God can read my handwriting. It could be loose leaf, loose leaf. It could be spiral. It could be in a fancy book. There are when stores are open again. There's beautiful books uh, for doing journaling in, and for some people that really helps them a lot um, to have this very nice book that they write in, this very nice pen that they write with. Again, it's all lost on me. Your journal could be a blog. It could be a Word doc. It could be a Google doc. It could be something you do daily, or it could be something you do two, three times a week. It could be very formal, it could be very informal, it could be very short, it could be very long, right? The important thing are, are what we talked about earlier, that it's not just an activity log, that it really is that reflection on God's word and how it applies in your life, the application of the gospel to your life and your relationships and the events of the world going on around you. If you need a simple starting approach because you've never journaled before and, and you're uncomfortable not having any kind of structure to guide you, Start with, you know, after you've done your daily Bible reading, write the verse or the idea that most stood out to you. Meditate on that for a few minutes, thinking about it and how it applies in your life and in the world around you, the situation you find yourself, the relationships, the spouse, the kids, the grandkids, whatever the topic is. And then just write down those thoughts and insights. And after you've done that, write down, you know, or it could be full sentences, it could be bullets, write about recent events, feelings, responses, prayers, joys, or successes that you want to, to think about, uh, that you want to remember, that you want to record, that you want to process. And that's really kind of it. I mean, that's, you know, I don't want you to say it's, it's not a complicated thing. It's a fairly easy thing to get started, like many of these spiritual disciplines. Right? It's not going to be, it may or may not be super enjoyable the first few times you're doing it, but I think that as you do it more, you will find the value increasingly. Uh, and as you, as Audra said, look back uh, and see the way God has worked in your life and the way you have changed, the way God has worked transformation in your life, then it becomes a source of, you know, where you, you want to have that. So what I would say, just from a tips perspective, again, don't worry about how awesome you are or are not at writing and things like that. Journaling can be fruitful no matter how well or poorly you write or how much you invest in it. Even just a, a few entries each week can accomplish a great deal within these things we've been talking about. As I said, it does require some persistence. So you might start with a great deal of enthusiasm and it might go well for a while. There will probably come a season where you're just not feeling it. Uh, that is true for almost every one of the spiritual disciplines. That, I think, is actually part of how God's grace works uh, in the disciplines because uh, as we learn to push through that block, push through that season of dryness where we, where we just aren't feeling it, uh, we then come to appreciate it more when we come to the other side. So when you get to that point where you're just not feeling it, I just encourage you to push through the block. Uh, now, if you are a very systematic person uh, like me and others, one of the things you will struggle with is like if you build yourself a system, like I'm going to do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or I'm going to do it every day, and then you miss a day because it just doesn't work for some reason. You have a doctor's appointment, you oversleep, the you know, kids are going crazy or whatever, and you miss a day, then you feel like, oh, I gotta catch up. So what did I do three days ago and how do I reflect on that? Just don't worry about it. Don't worry about getting caught up, right? Just show up to your next appointment with, with God in your journal and, and show up and write something. <coughs> 
And the other thing is I've talked about all these different benefits spiritually as you do biblical journaling, as you are reflecting on God's word in your life. But you may be convinced at this point, you may not be convinced at this point, but the thing is you do need to journal before you start to experience its benefits. So if it's not sounding very exciting to you, why don't you give it a shot for a few weeks? Because again, for many people, there's not a lot you know, else going on. Uh, you suddenly have a lot more free time than you used to. Now for others, I recognize you have a whole lot more people in your house uh, and you may have dramatically less time than you are used to, in which case, you know, take that notebook into the bathroom with you, uh, use the bathroom as your office, uh, and you at least write something. Uh, nothing wrong with using the bathroom as the office when you have an awful lot of coworkers suddenly in your house. So again, uh, I see a few things going by on stream, so let me catch up with any comments or questions um, from folks. Excellent. I see lots of like little hearts and emojis like flying by on the, my screen. I don't even know what that means because I'm not enough of a Facebook expert. But I think that means people are liking the comments that people are making. So, um, yep, yeah, it's a great comment, Audra. I can read it now. So, yep, just show up and write something. So let me just, I will conclude, give you a concluding thought, your homework for the week, uh, and then we'll close in prayer. So concluding thought, and this is different from kind of what we've been talking about along the way, but this is just something to put things in perspective, right? Because previous generations were much better about uh, journaling than often we are in our busyness today. Think about future generations. The journal you write might well be the only written record that survives your life other than the basic courthouse records and census records. So your journal, which admittedly, you know, is, is for you, right? It's something you, for you and for the Lord, but, but it can also become, without you ever planning it to be, your testimony of faith for the future generations that take a look at that, who see that, and can look back on the faithfulness of their, their mother or their grandfather or their great-grandmother or their great-great-grandfather and be moved by that and by the experiences of your life. And so again, if you have not historically been a journaler, now is a great time because you've probably got some things you know, running around in your head that are, are a little bit difficult to take captive every thought, as Paul tells us to do, and journaling does help us with taking captive every thought. So use the journal in that way, and you will have inadvertently created a testimony to future generations uh, related to your experiences and your biblical processing uh, of the great COVID pandemic of 2020. So let me suggest homework. I only suggest because I can't actually encounter you to check your work off. Uh, and I count entirely on you being honest next week. But let me just suggest as homework to try journaling something. Does not need to be a work of art, does not need to be a multi page essay. Just try journaling something at least three times between now and Wednesday. And I would encourage you to space it out. So journal something tomorrow, and then maybe one day over the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, and then sometime early next week before we meet again uh, on Wednesday night. And then I'll just say any closing commentary before I close this in prayer. I got a looks like a head shake. So, oh no, it's my my thing quit quit scrolling. Oh, there you go. Carly said, "My kids love to read my prayer notebook. Some private prayers I write cryptic because I know they." Oh, that's awesome. I mean, it's awesome that you are confident enough to share your prayer notebook in that way because, again, that's teaching your kids the power of prayer. Um, I'm, <laughs> I love the cryptic writing that they will read it. Uh, uh, I could see people doing all kinds of different cryptic things to keep, to keep their kids out from the, the specific names and ideas and things like that. All right, well, let me close the word of prayer, and then, uh, you know, we can, we'll, I'll let you off of the hook a little bit early. Father God, you are an amazing God, Lord, and, and we are reminded of it perhaps never more often than during times of difficulty and crisis, because in the good times, it is easy for us to live in our own confidence and, and imagine that we have control over things that we absolutely do not have control over. 
But we get to times like this and we realize we do not have control, Lord, and that you are the sovereign God of the universe and that we love you and we, we praise you and we delight in you, Lord, and we, we embrace the promises you make for us as followers of Jesus Christ, that you are with us, that you hear us, that you will guide and deliver us through these difficult times, Lord. And of course, we seek to grow in Christ likeness. And so, Lord, as we have talked about journaling, we know that's not a mandatory thing that you command, and yet we know that you have often used that as a, a way of shaping the great saints of old. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to, to take advantage of this, this skill that is modeled for us in Scripture, that has been modeled for us by centuries of believers before us, Lord, that it would help us that in your great magnificent way in which you you hear and answer our prayers and you you relieve our anxieties and and fears and swap them out with with love and with with uh, peace or that journaling is a means by which you do that and so i pray that there would be some here in this group maybe perhaps all who would be willing to give that a shot in the days to come to try it out or to deepen and grow in this habit that they already have as several have shared Lord God, that through it, that we would do it not for, for the sake of some, you know, badge of merit, but we would do it purely to grow in godliness, to draw nearer to Christ and to become more like him. And Lord God, as we, I guess, virtually go our separate ways, as we continue to live our socially distant lives, Lord God, I just pray that you would continue to bring comfort to all those who love you. And that you would use this difficult time to, as well to, when people are off balance and off, off, their, off their normal concerns and are having to reassess their priorities and reflect on the, the shortness of life and the instability of life, Lord, that you would, this would be a time in which many would turn to you for answers and that we, your people, would be eager to share the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And that out of this terrible situation great good might come that there we would see a renewal of not only the church but a great revival amongst the broader culture and a turning to you lord in faith in christ and so lord we just ask for for spiritual protection and strength for the days ahead and for faithfulness lord in our growth in you we ask these things in jesus name amen